So how are we on time? Do you want me just to kind of walk through what this looks like? Because I think, I suspect there's a lot of interest. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see a demo. I'm, we're all right on time. No. Okay. Um, I, I, I just rattled on through it. So I'm, I was like, woof. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we got to keep plowing through it. But I, would, I, I do think there's interest in seeing a demo, even okay. if I'm just speaking selfishly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, so let's do this. So I've already deployed it, but this is kind of the way that you would deploy it. And you'd see Azure feet. I don't know why it didn't. Here, let's try something else here. Try it again. There we go. I should have just waited. It's just like every other resource. Make sure it's in the right. I think this is the one. Now, granted, I've already deployed it. And if you don't, if you haven't gone through the notion of opening up that ticket with support, this will remind you to do it. You essentially have to have hosts allocated. And because we're doing this on bare metal servers, our teams that are involved with capacity management, they just have to know about the fact that you're interested in moving forward with an AVS environment. Um, so I've got this here. It's in North Central. This is where you provide the name. So we'll just put test AVS. Oops, can't have the space. Um, it, it won't load the SKU here, but there's only one SKU. And I've already deployed it. It takes two and a half hours to redeploy. So I won't go through this process. It's hopefully showing you how simple it is, though, to set up. This is where you plug in your um, address box. I think I did like a 10.5.0.0 slash 22. You tie it to an existing virtual network if you want to. This has a gateway subnet. That's what it requires. That's where the express route connections happen. Um, or you could leave it blank and you could do the peerings after the fact. It really depends upon what you want. Then you hit review and create and create. It's super simple. I am actually shocked at how simple it's become. So let's go back here into my environment. So this is what I've deployed, right? And you see over here, this is the primary peering subnet, secondary peering subnet. This is the management network essentially. So think of that as the slash 22 I use to build out the environment. It's just like every other Azure environment as well. You get your activity log, your access control, your tags. These are more so for the Azure um, kind of resource itself. This is all the locks. So if there was a lock involved, it doesn't have a lock, but this is a great way to ensure that somebody doesn't go in here and accidentally delete something with automation. This is your connectivity blade. So this is the vMotion network. I think this is probably, I'm using Azure Mask to kind of, kind of blur some of this out here because it's some sensitive info. But if I were to paste it in here, that's your vMotion network. That's the private cloud management. So it's all within that slash 22 network. This is the express route ID, the private peering ID. And this is the auth key that gets created for you if you specify the virtual network when you create it. Now, if you don't, you can always request one and use it. This I have not yet plugged into an environment. I don't have another express route circuit to enable global reach on, but I had to create a bunch of documentation that showcased how simple it was to just request an authorization key, you provide a name and you hit create. A couple of seconds later, it shows up here. This is the HCX, remember advanced is, is uh, deployed by default. If you need enterprise, you can add it on with a support ticket. Eventually that will show up within this deployment model. So they're going through the testing and validation. So that'll allow kind of more comprehensive management or uh, migration patterns. So this is the, uh, the uh, HCX Cloud Manager IP, right? This is where you would specify a public IP if you need anything routable with a public IP. Maybe there's a workload that has a public IP that needs to be accessible over port 80. You'd need to have a public IP here and then work on um, NATing inside of NSXT Manager so that everybody you know who's hitting that environment knows where it needs to go and you can access it internally and externally. This is where you configure your global reach. This is where you add your on-prem connection, right? I don't have anything set up because I don't have an express route instance to connect to, but it's pretty straightforward in, in that regard. This is your identity. So this is the, the web client URL. So I'll kind of showcase some of what that looks like here. That's where I would go to and it would look just like uh, vCenter, the admin username. It's, it's just, I think it's just cloud admin. Yep, this is the admin password. Notice how all you have to, all you can do is copy it to the clipboard. 
super cool. Same with the NSXT credentials. Um, you've got your NSXT, and this is all done for you by way of that two and a half hour deployment. So you don't have to worry about it. Microsoft will do all of that through all of the great automation tooling that, that we have. And then the admin username for um, HCX is just admin, I believe. Yep. So, and then you can think about, you know, this is a certificate thumbprint if you need it. If you want to make sure that, you know, you don't get the error message when you try and go to HTTPS and it says, do you trust the, the authority of this um, certificate? This is the clusters blade. Always takes a little bit of time. I never know why. If this doesn't load, I'll just kind of keep moving on through here. But that's that, yeah, this, this is where you would go in and edit the cluster. So you can add, should just, it may not because I don't have additional. Yeah, so I, I don't, I only have capacity to do three, but it's as simple as moving it this way. And if you need to open up more, you just need to open up that quota increase ticket. This is kind of the secret sauce. This is that simplified NSX interface. This is where you have your NSX interfaces show up. You don't have to be super savvy on NSX T unless you are, right? This is where you can configure your DHCP server. I don't have anything configured here. You could do a relay as well. This is some port mirroring. You could set up some troubleshooting without having to know all the NSX T clicking here, there, everywhere. This is kind of the DNS zones and DNS services you can configure. So this is, so what we've done is we've exposed NSX T to their ARM APIs, the Azure Resource Manager APIs. And we've allowed for an easier way for admins to come in here and um, administer the service. I'm not going to focus on these too much. This is where you'd see like Azure Monitor, Azure Monitor Metrics. These are some of the automation pieces and the resource health, right? So it's just like a lot of the Azure resources that get deployed. Um, let's go back into the resource itself. Let me go into the jump host. Oh, you know what, it dawned on me too. Okay, I still have it open. I was like, I don't remember exactly what I picked for the uh, the password for this. So I'm gonna use the Bastion host. So there's no public IP attached here. This is where I will type in, let's see. And then it, I'll type, I'll uh, grab my password down here. That's what it is. Da, da, da. And now, so what we're we're in an, a VM that lives in Azure, that is that we've accessed behind the Azure Bastion, which is just a secure way to access your environments without having to put a public IP on an, on a VM in, in Azure. So it's a great way to SSH into your Linux hosts, RDP into your Windows hosts. It's all handled in the browser as well. So it's over port 443. This gets a lot of customers super excited because it's a very secure way of locking your environment down. So this is the, the vSphere instance itself. So let me do some copying and pasting. Oh, this remembers that it was there. Oh, come on. I think it's because it's been, uh, it needs to be updated. Let me, let me try it again. been a busier week than I anticipated. Whoops, that's not what I want. Hang on. We'll go to the, let's go here to identity. This is the web URL. Here we are. We'll go into the environment. I will grab the password from over here. And boom, you're inside of your AVS environment. So you see there are three hosts that are tied to the subscription that, that this is deployed in. They've got their own naming convention, right? I don't, as an administrator, I shouldn't care as much about the naming convention. This is a service that is kind of like a PaaS service, but there's some IS, ISS components. But Microsoft handled all of this through automation. So they built out the SDDC data center, the cluster one. You can see here that these are Dell EMC servers. 
the reality here is too, we could always pick a different hardware vendor. So that shouldn't be something that really factors into your decision if you were to pick it or not pick it. Um, but that's just the vendor that we've used right now for the AV36 nodes. Um, and then if you go in here to the vSAN data store, these are all the different servers that get deployed and you can't see them in the host view, but you've got your HCX manager, your NSX app one, app two, app three. These are essentially making up your NSXT manager. This is your vCenter appliance. And I am not quite sure what EVM one is. Um, this is the first time I have seen it. So I have, I literally deployed this, I want to say it was like two weeks ago and I haven't had a chance to go back in here and do a lot of digging and documenting, but all of this was built by way of me going in, specifying the subscription, specifying the resource group, um, determining the number of hosts and kind of either tying it to a, a virtual network or not. And then adding a slash 22 cider network in and all of this just built itself within about two and a half hours. So it's a really cool solution. Um, I just haven't had enough time to build any more demos outside of the bare bones of this is what it looks like when it's deployed and up in Azure.